Good morning, Mount Nebo, my brothers and sisters, those who are sharing with us. Um, we greet you again in the name of Jesus. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Uh, God has allowed us to lie down and rest on last evening, and, and we rose this morning clothed in our right mind, and we can only thank him. And uh, we don't want to take for granted anything that he has done because he's been so good to us. And um, we are just uh, thankful for all that he has done, blessed us throughout another year. And now again, we are entered into uh, the Christmas season where um, Jesus Christ was born. And we thank God for sending him to save the sins of the world. Amen. Uh, we're gonna sing an uh, opening selection <clears throat> found on page, um, let's see, I have it down here, Go Tell It on the Mountain, on um, page 66. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere, go Tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ was born. While shepherds kept their watching over silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heaven there shone a holy light. Go. Tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ was born. The shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that held a Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ was born. Down in a lowly manger, the humble Christ was born. And God sent us salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go. Tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ was born. Hallelujah. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ was born. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you right now, giving honor and praise to you, Lord. Thank you, God, for sending your son Jesus down to this world to save us from our sins. And now, Lord, we thank you because we have a right to the tree of life. We pray right now, Lord, as we look into your word that you will help us preach this word fervent and help us, give us the strength to stand, lead us in our thoughts, and help us in our prayers. And Lord, as we go forth in this Christmas celebration, we pray, Lord, that you will watch over us. You have kept us all this time, Lord, and we're leaning and depending on you for all your help, Lord, that you will keep us safe from this pandemic, which is still raging. But we know that our God is stronger than all. And so we are depending on you. 
So be with us now and keep us in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning. I want to talk just for a few minutes today about um, um, family problems in the home. Family problems in the home. And I've come to realize that it doesn't matter who you are or how close you are to God. There is always some trouble and problems lurking around the home. For as long as I can remember, there has always been some type of family struggle. Even during this time of year, in the Christmas season, people are find themselves going through some hard times. Nothing has ever been perfect, and if, if it wasn't, if it's not one thing, it's always seemed to be another. Parents, trouble, children, trouble, some kind of trouble going on within the home. Somewhere along the line, there has always been some kind of problem. It doesn't matter how close you walk with God, how much of a Christian you are, how many titanium crosses you wear around your neck. Amen. The Satan is always propping up and showing up and trying to cause some trouble or some kind of problem within the home. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter how close you are to God. Your prob yet problems, difficulties, troubles, pains, and suffering somehow or another always come. And it seems like when things are going real good, amen, and things seem to then seem to turn to the worst. Amen. Something is always popping up that causes some kind of strain or some kind of emotion. But whatever happens, you need to know that we serve a God who can handle impossibilities. Amen. It doesn't matter how large you are or how small, we depend on God to handle our problems, the struggles, the difficulties, the pains, and the sufferings. God can handle them. Amen. Now, as I take a look at this text, which I will read for you, before you, then you will get an understanding of how, how trouble seems to invade the home. Amen. In chapter 1 of Luke, beginning at verse 5, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. And they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in age." Amen. I want to stop right there. Here they are, good people, loving people. The Bible identified them as righteous people. Amen. Here they are, of both of them of, of, of the priestlyhood. Amen. Zachariah's father was a priest, and Elizabeth was of a priestly family. Both of them righteous. They, they were were prayer warriors. Amen. You can look at it in the text. They prayed and they led others to prayer. Yet they had a problem. Amen. Elizabeth was barren and, and they both were well stricken in age. Amen. And, and being barren uh, carried a, a stigma and, and people uh, looked down at you when you could not bear a child. And, and here they are now, well stricken in age. But even though they were well stricken in age, it did not stop them or hinder them for calling on God, praying to him, and asking them for what they want. Amen. See, your age should never stop you from praying. As long as you are in your right mind, you ought to be able to offer up a prayer <clears throat> unto God. Amen. Prayers can sometimes stretch into years. You can be calling on the Lord and asking him 
to help you or to help, give you some direction or whatever. And sometimes what you ask him for, sometimes it takes him years to give it to you. And sometimes he does that to prove a point. First of all, the point he proves that uh, if you keep praying and you keep looking up to him, nothing is too hard for him. And, and, and when you, just when you think things are, are, are done and you can't go any further, no sense of praying anymore, God is just getting you ready for your breakthrough. Amen. I'll be a witness here. God can handle that which seems to be impossible. I don't have to answer how, how nor do I have the answer when. But I do know who. Amen. Since God created the world in six days and rest on the seventh day, I don't know how he did all that, but I know he was able to do it. Amen. I don't know. I don't know how he does a whole lot of things, but all I do know is that he does them. And when you're having trouble in your home, hold on. Keep praying. Keep on talking to the Lord because God is just getting ready. And it seems like when your trouble gets the worst, amen, and that's when God is getting ready to step through. And here they are, Elizabeth and, and, and Zacharias. Uh, here he is in the temple handling priestly duties. But even in the temple, he didn't stop praying. Amen. You had people praying inside of the temple. People were praying that they had led to pray. They're praying outside of the temple. And you know what? You keep on praying long enough. God is going to come through. He's going to answer your prayer. Amen. I don't know about you, but there have been times I've prayed and i prayed. The old folks said I prayed all night long. Amen. I prayed and I prayed until God came to me with an answer. Amen. Sometimes God has you to hang on and hang out there for a while. Amen. But guess what? If you hang in there, you don't give up, you keep on praying. Amen. You keep on praying. Eventually, God is going to come through. Because one thing can't stay in heaven, a prayer and an answer. You pray, God will hear you, and he will answer your prayer. Amen. Look at Zacharias and Elizabeth. Here it is. Years and years they've been praying for a child. They've been praying for a son in here. And, then, and, and God had not delivered. But yet they didn't give up. They kept pressing. They kept praying. Amen. So here Zacharias is in the temple. Amen. Uh, during the time of lighting the incense. And, uh, and God had a way, has a way of doing some things. Amen. God sent an angel in to talk to him. Amen. And let him know that they will bear a son. Amen. And his, his name will be John. Uh, hallelujah. You know, God knows when to send somebody to help you. Amen. There are times in life when we need some help. We need somebody to come around us, to pray with us. Amen. God knows who to send. Amen. And there are some things that man can't do. God will do them himself. Amen. So here it is. God sent an angel there to tell Zacharias, I know you've been waiting a long time, you and your wife. That, that's been a lot of trouble, embarrassment in your home. You've been hanging around a long time, but I got some good news for you. This angel has come to answer your prayer. And I thank God because he is one who will answer our prayer. Isn't that right? Amen. So God let them know that here is your answer. And God blessed them with a son. Amen. Not just any son, but they blessed them with John the Baptist. Amen. And, 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 and thou shalt have joy and gladness. Amen. This baby, this child is going to bring you some joy. Amen. He's going to bring you some happiness. He's going to, he's going to bring you some gladness. Amen. In other words, the joy that he's going to bring, 
Amen. You're going to be happy that this child was born. And especially at a time when we needed a Savior. At a time when we needed to be delivered from our sins. He came and to, to let people know that Jesus Christ was on his way. Amen. And I'm glad about it. Amen. Amen. Whenever trouble jumps into your household, especially this time of year, I stop by to tell you to don't give up. You keep on praying. And the Lord will answer your prayer. God will step in. He'll work things out on your behalf. Is there a witness here? Amen. Keep on doing good. Amen. That's why Galatians 6 and 9 says, And let us not be weary in well-doing. Amen. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Amen. Don't faint. Don't fall off by the wayside. Keep on calling on the Lord. I know trouble will come. Trouble is bound to come because Satan is not happy because of what the Lord has done for us in our lives. Amen. But when it comes, you start praying and you keep on praying. And I guarantee you in due season, God is going to hear your prayer. Amen. God answered their prayer. Sent them a son. And I stopped by to remind us that the Lord will get involved with your everyday issues. Is there a witness here? He'll fix your everyday problems. He'll handle your everyday troubles. Amen. He'll handle your problems in your home. Amen. You can look back over your life and see where God has brought you from. You can look back over your life and see what God has done for you in your household. Amen. When you've had to call on his name. Amen. Some of us have called on him a, a long time and it took a long time for God to answer our call. But I tell you what, once God answers that prayer, amen, oh, it brings joy in your heart. It puts joy bells in your heart, amen. It puts joy in your mind and, and you have joy and you're happy and you pray glad that God has made a way for you. Amen. I don't know about you today, but I stopped by to tell you that their trouble is going to come in your home. Uh, but don't worry about it. We serve a God uh, who can handle every situation. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. We thank him. Amen. Look what God did. God worked a miracle. They were really too old to have children, uh, but yet God saw fit to allow it to happen. And he will do it for you if you call on his name. Isn't that right? Amen. I'm glad about that because we serve a God who is able to work things out for us. Amen. Because we're unable to work some things out for ourselves. Uh, but he's a worthy God and he is an able God. Isn't that right? Amen. So we thank him for everything that he has done. We thank him for what he's going to do in a few more days as we read in our scripture. Yes, he sent John to be a forerunner, but the, there was one that John talked about. Uh, his name was Jesus Christ. Amen. John had a home, amen, with his family Elizabeth and his father Zacharias. They had a place to lay their head. Uh, but look at Jesus. Uh, Jesus had nowhere to lay his head, even before he was born. Uh, because when uh, uh, Joseph and Mary went up to pay their taxes, uh, Mary was pregnant with child. Uh, and the angel of the Lord told Joseph, don't worry about it. Uh, you go ahead and take her as your wife, uh, because that which has happened to her was not done by any man. Uh, in other words, she wasn't cheating on you. Amen. This is two sermons in one. Amen. They wasn't cheating on you. But John had a home uh, with his family, and they had problems in that home. Isn't that right? Because uh, she couldn't have a child, uh, but look at Jesus, uh, uh, when Mary was carrying them, uh, they went from door to door, uh, from end to end, uh, knocking on the door, uh, and every door that they knocked on, the innkeeper would come to the door and said, no room in the end, uh, no room 
in the end. Uh, they will move on a little farther, uh, knock on another door, uh, only to find out uh, that the rooms were all filled. Uh, yeah, hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Uh, Zacharias had a home, uh, but Mary and Joseph, she's pregnant. She had no home. Uh, they were trying to find somebody somewhere where they could go in uh, and have this child. Uh, look where they end up. Uh, they end up in a stable uh, with troughs uh, where they laid the baby Jesus when he was born. Uh, but I thank be to God that Jesus uh, was born uh, in the Bethlehem. Uh, have I got a witness? Uh, I heard somebody said I heard a newborn baby cry. Uh, and uh, his name was Jesus. Uh, and he came to save us uh, from our sins. Uh, have I got a witness here? Uh, Jesus. Uh, happy birthday to you, Jesus. Uh, we're glad that God sent you uh, because the world needed you. Uh, and thank Thanks be to God, uh, you came and you grew up uh, and you showed us the way. Uh, you told us that we were going to have to face trials and tribulations in our own homes. Uh, have a God a witness uh, because when you were baptized, uh, you were immediately led into the wilderness by the evil one. Uh, have I got a witness? Uh, so that let me know uh, that there will be some trouble uh, in our homes. Uh, the world right now is full of trouble. Uh, but thanks be to God uh, that he has saved us from our sins. Uh, the world may put us down, uh, but Jesus will pick us up. Uh, have I got a witness? Uh, so we celebrate his birthday uh, this day. This come this believe it on him. shall not perish, uh, but have uh, everlasting life. Uh, John was born with his family in a home, uh, but Jesus was born uh, with Mary and Joseph in a in a hog pen, uh, in a cow uh, pasture, in a stable is where he was. Uh, and there he was. Uh, he was came like he was lowly uh, in a manger. Uh, oh, hallelujah. And I'm glad about that. There's not a friend uh, like the lowly Jesus. Uh, no, not one. Uh, no, not one. None else could heal uh, all our soul's diseases. Uh, no, not one. Uh, because Jesus knows uh, all about our struggles. Uh, he will guide uh, until the day is done. Uh, there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Born in a stable. Down in Bethlehem. Laid in a, a trough of straw. But yet, he was the savior of the world. Amen. Lord, we thank you for sending Jesus to us. 400 years of darkness. Man was calling out on your name. And you didn't answer, Lord. But down in Bethlehem, what would you do? You sent the answer. The answer to all the world's troubles and problems. And it was that Jesus Christ was born. So yes, we ought to tell it. Everywhere we go. That Jesus Christ was born. Tell it if they want to hear it. And if they don't want to hear it, tell them anyhow. And perhaps somewhere down the line, they would 
take hold of Christ. So we thank you. Bless your name for everything. Lord, there's trouble that lurks around. We pray in right now. Trouble don't last always. So we thank you. We bless you. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. 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 Perhaps you're someone here today who has not accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. We give you opportunity now to give your life to Christ. He's waiting and he's willing to save you because that's why he came. That the world through him might be saved. If that's you, wherever you are, take hold of Jesus. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. And he will give you a seat in heaven. So we bless you and we thank you for everything. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Again, we honor our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The perfect time that we are able to commemorate the last supper that he had with his disciples. What was on that Thursday night when he sat down with them to enjoy the Passover feast. And as they sat around Enjoying the meal. Jesus spoke up and said, one of you will betray me tonight. They began to ask him, Lord, is it I? Who's going to do this terrible thing? And Jesus said, the one that sops with me. So Jesus went to the sopping dish. He got there, he met Judas. And he looked at Judas and told him what to do with. Do it quickly. And Judas got up and ran out into the night to betray our Lord. We want to thank Lord, for going up to Jerusalem, just like he said he would. He had told his disciples that he was going up to Jerusalem. He would be marked and scarred, and he would be put to death. And of course, this was disturbing to them, and they said, Lord, not, not you. We've been with you for three years and uh, you mean to tell me now you're going to to leave us and Jesus said to them let not your heart be troubled if you believe in God believe also in me for in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you but I go and prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you into myself and where I am there you may be also and where I go, the way I go, you know. And Tom said, Lord, we know not whether thou goest. How can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man can come unto the Father but by me. So we come today to uh, share in this communion service. Jesus had them to understand that besides this, this will be the last time that they would have this supper with him before he suffered. We don't have any power to change these emblems from a common to a spiritual use, but the Lord has. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come right now to thank you 
Thank you, Lord, for blessing us to be reminded of what you did for us on Calvary's cross. You suffered, bled, and you died. So we would have a right to the tree of life. Lord, thank you for these emblems that you have sanctified. And you have set them apart for our service. We thank you for justifying us. We've been justified by the shedding of your blood. Now, Lord, as we continue in this communion service, we pray right now that we be pleasing in your sight. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Jesus, after the Passover feast, the table was cleared, and the fruit of the vine and loaves of unleavened bread were left on the table. And with the absence of the betrayer, they were able to enjoy this last communion. This bread represents his body which was broken for you. And he says, often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are sickly among you, and many have died. John said, this is the bread that came down from heaven. He that eateth this bread shall never die. Let us eat together. Amen. This fruit of the vine represents the blood that was shed for us on Calvary's cross. They speared him in his side. Water and blood came streaming down. Water to get in touch with nature. Blood to save the souls of men and women. One writer said, there's a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein. As sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all thy guilty stain. And because of the shedding of the blood of the Lamb of God, we've lost our guilty stain. Let us commune together. Amen. They sang a hymn. And they went out into the Mount of Olives. As you go today, find a Mount of Olives where you can just stop by and share a word of prayer. And God will continue to look down on you and answer your prayers when you pray. Because prayer is the key to heaven. And faith unlocks heaven's doors. God bless you. God keep you. Have a blessed day in the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Now to him that is able to keep us from falling, to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, now henceforth and forevermore. Let all the saints of God say amen, amen, amen. Go in peace.